Hello and welcome to the application delivery how-to series. My name is Chris Christ. I'm a solutions architect with VMware. And today's topic is to look at how to create a virtual service and span that virtual service across multiple clusters within a Tanzu Kubernetes grid multi-cloud environment. Um, to complete the stated goal, we're actually going to use the NSXT Advanced Load Balancer, and um, formerly known as AVI Networks, and the AMKO, the AVI Multi-Cluster Kubernetes Operator, to accomplish this. So a couple of things to get started. Um, we're going to make some assumptions, but uh, your GSLB environment should already be set up. Um, so if you have a multi-site environment and um, you have multiple active GSLB members, ensure that's set up. Um, what we want to do is we want to install AMKO into a cluster which is in the same site as the GSLB leader. What we're going to do is we're going to point AMKO at the GSLB leader, so ensure that that's set up. AMKO is actually deployed via a Helm chart. Within that Helm chart, a very common kind of Helm chart, very simple to deploy. Within that Helm chart, you're going to have a couple of key configuration items, such as the controller IP, um, the cluster information that we want to deploy our active active applications into, things of that nature. Um, and then what we're also going to do is we're going to create a Kubernetes secret. And within that secret, you're going to have the kube configs of the various different clusters that, again, that we, we want to deploy the active active um, application into. Um, but to summarize, um, AMKO, as you can see in the bottom there, we're gonna, it facilitates multi-cluster application deployments. Uh, we run as a pod within the Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster, and we can extend application ingresses or service type load balancers across multiple clusters for real-world deployments. So on to the demo. So within my demo system, I actually have two controllers. I have 141 and 140. 141 is my GSLB leader, as you can see here. Um, it's the GSLB leader, and 140 is the secondary. If I come over to applications, you can see that this cluster, cluster two, doesn't have um, anything deployed as of yet. We just have a DNS listener and a shard VS, and this was deployed by AKO. Um, and same again on the, uh, the other side. We just have a DNS VS and a shard VS. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come into uh, my CLI, and I'm just going to... Um, I'm going to apply my application into cluster two first, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to deploy that same application into uh, cluster one as well. And as you can see that, that's both deployed. Now I can come over to my clusters um, and you can already see um, that has deployed already. I have an ingress. Um, you can see that's cluster two, hack or crystal local. Um, and then I can come over to my cluster one. We're actually going to have to refresh this page. Um, but it's there too. And as you can see, hack got crystal local. And I actually already have a GSLB uh, VS FQDN. Um, I'm going to need to come over to the uh, GSLB services um, just to look at the um, the active status of that GSLB VS. Now, typically, um, it can take a couple of seconds for that VS to actually come up. Um, the reason for that is obviously we've just deployed the ingress that happened this very second. Um, and what actually has to happen, we have a data plane health check that the uh, DNS VS that we just looked at, well, actually the DNS service engine, it's going to initiate a um, GSLB health check to the two ingresses. And it can just take a minute or two for that to, for that to sort of kick in. And as you can see, it's just gone green. Um, so we're able to click in here and you can see I've got an active active site. Uh, 167 for uh, cluster two, 158 for cluster one. So as of now, the site is up, we're active, active. Um, so what does that look like from an end user perspective? If I just come over to my um, Windows desktop, I have an NS lookup pulled up and you can see, I have my time to live set pretty aggressively, um, but you can see every time I do an NS lookup, it's, it's actually responding with a different IP address, a different ingress. Um, so as you can tell, we're active, active. Um, and this is the site in question as well. So the next step really is to um, see what happens when we um, have a site failover. So what I'm actually going to do is we're going to stay in cluster one, and I'm actually going to delete the ingress from cluster one. Just delete the whole application. Um, so now I come back to cluster one. If I just refresh this page, it may change just a second, but it's happened already. You can see that the um, cluster one site information has disappeared. And now we're just only accessing it via 167. So again, if I go back to my Windows desktop, I can um, access the site. Everything's working perfectly. And 
you can see that I'm just accessing the 167 now rather than the 157 and the 167. Um, so I hope that was useful. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And please don't forget to check out the other videos in the application delivery how-to series. Thank you. Bye.